off. He's done. What's that? Hello, Kendall Nation. I hope you're doing well. Today is Tuesday, August, no, I'm sorry, April 14th, um, 2020. It was two years ago today that I moved into my apartment. Um, first time I really ever left, lived alone in my entire life was when I moved in here. And two years in, and I really like being kind of like living by myself. It's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, uh, bigger Easter weekend, of course, all the dynamics are changed because we're all kind of locked down. Everybody's chilling at home. Uh, so hope everybody had a great Easter. We're able to spend it. Family, friends, Skyping, Zoom meeting, kind of whatever, right? Whatever works. Hope you guys were able to enjoy it. Have a nice, maybe a nice Easter dinner. Um, maybe not traditionally enjoyed like you would with family and friends, but alas, we're in a new world right now. Um, I had a lovely Easter meal of um, a double quarter pounder with cheese and fries um, because I didn't want to cook and um, I was out so I'm like let's just do it right um, so and I got to um, stop by my work the other day did some grocery shopping um, and was able to see some co-workers and I, can't, I actually miss being at work I'm not gonna lie about that um, but soon soon walmart i will be back in all of my blonde glory hashtag 3177 barbie um i actually have notes so if you see me looking down it's because i'm looking at my notes um but with my glasses on oddly enough i can't read them and so it's more just a prop maybe at this point um but you know last video i talked about how god sees you and, and you need to embrace that and that was really kind of directed at those that are, that are believers and stuff like that. I'm, I don't want to be overtly religious on this channel, even though that's a huge part of who I am. Um, I don't want to just be pigeonholed into that little niche right there, right? So I want to try touching other things. Um, but you know, the one thing I miss about being at work um, is just the interaction with associates and... Um, just kind of catch up on their lives and see what they're doing see you know some of them are are um are of the faith community and so they kind of tell us what you know what's going on in their life there um so i actually know quite a bit about people and i just i love to visit with them catch up to them and see what they're doing and, you know it got me thinking the other day i got up at i was like 2 30 in the morning because i can't sleep i don't sleep at night anymore since this surgery um and so I get up a lot and I have a lot of time on my hands. But I got to think about when I do interviews at work, um, you know, we always have the standard questions that we ask. And, you know, it's funny when somebody sits down for an interview, they're always, you know, they're all like proper. And a lot of times I'm just kind of like chilling, right? I'm just pretty relaxed. Um, so I try to bring a relaxed vibe. And usually while I'm typing in stuff and bringing up all their paperwork, I'm going to ask them, you know, kind of one question. I pretty much ask this across the board, not because I'm nosy, not because I'm trying to make small talk, but I want to get to know the person beyond what I'm seeing on the piece of paper, right? Because that piece of paper is a snapshot of this person's life, and I want to know more about the person, right? The paperwork, while important, I need to know. I want to know the person. I want to know the person behind it because I can, can better connect with you. And the one question I always ask people is, what makes you you? And that kind of throws people off because they don't really know what to say. Um, and so I kind of get, you know, I'm like, do you, are you a gamer? Are you into sports? Are you into books? Are you into music? Uh, and I'm old, so I'm pretty well read. Uh, so I can, you know, a lot of them will say gamers. I interview a lot of people that are into games. Um, but I can have a conversation with them because while I'm not a gamer, I kind of know a little bit about it. And I know a lot of people that play. So I get a little insight. You know, if you read, I'm, I'm a reader. Uh, Burn Dead, if you're watching this, I'm a big reader, if you remember that conversation. Um, your music, what kind of music do you like? Do you sing? Do you dance? I mean, all these things I use, not again, not to snoop, but to get to understand the person and, and get to know them, right? So, I, you know, because if you're going to be working with me, I want to be able to connect with you on some level, right? Like, I don't want a stuffy, stale um, relationship at work, right? I like to have fun, and people that know me, know how I can be at work um, but you know the the one thing that I find this might be loud because it's right under the microphone 
how about this? Let's do this. How about that? Um, the one thing that I find that really tells me a lot about persons is the, at least as important to me as well as their character and their integrity, right? You know, character, short version is how people see you and, you know, when you're interacting with them and how you are. Integrity is how you are when they're not watching you or they're not around you, right? If you, if, you know, you're around people and you're preaching it, you know, shame on you for pornography and blah, blah, blah. But in your private life, you have an addiction to pornography, your integrity is kind of shot on that aspect, right? Um, not my perfect that way? No. Good Lord, no, I'm trying, right? I'm a work in progress. It's like we're all a work in progress. And, you know, it got me thinking, what what makes me, me? If I was going to turn the question on myself, and, you know, I thought, I kind of wandered around with a cup of coffee, and I was just like, I don't know, and then hit me. What makes me, me is, well, besides the blonde hair and the blue eyes, like, I get that. That's a, that's a given, kids. It's my confidence level, right? That's what separates me from so many other people is I have this massive level of confidence that very few people have, right? Because I embrace my flaws. I embrace my mistakes. Um, you know, look, I'm almost 52 years old. I'm overweight. I'm, I have a deeper voice. Like, I got a lot of issues. I have no sense of style, like, I'm just a hot mess, right, with blonde hair. But you know what? I get up every day, and I go to work, and I walk in there with a level of confidence that you just you can't even begin to describe. And again, this kind of goes back to the whole candle effect, right? What makes the candle effect work? And it's that confidence, right? You know, there's a saying, you fake it till you make it. And I did that, and at some point I made it. I don't know when I quit faking it, when I quit made it, but I'm there. Right, and so um, that's really what makes me me. And I have all these flaws, and I embrace these flaws, right? But I take my confidence and I try to bleed it out into other people, right? Everybody's everybody's beautiful, right? From a physical standpoint, you know. And I look at us. I try my best to look at people as God sees them, right? Because I am. I mean, you know, I was a pastor for a lot of years, so I have a heart for people. So I try to look at people as God sees them. And it really has changed my perspective on a lot of things. Um, now there's a lot of beautiful people with ugly souls, right? Like, I'm getting into that. Um, but yeah, the confidence is what makes me so good at what I do because I'm I'm not afraid to laugh at myself. Um, you know, if, if I'm in the break room or if I'm walking around the back or I'm talking to people in the back room, if I'm on a roll and, and I'm rolling out my little funny monologue. And a lot of times I'm very self-deprecating, not in like a really mean way, but just a, I can laugh at myself and my imperfections and and yet they don't, doesn't seem to phase me, right? Now, it's odd because when I get home or in the privacy of home or, or you know, with a few select friends, I'm the most insecure person you will ever meet in your entire life. Um, but when I get into public or at work or whatever, like a, a switch just flips on, right? And so that's what I want to try to get across to other people too is take this confidence. And even if you are faking it, man, play that, right? Play that strength and just do it. And pretty soon as you, you get up and you, <clears throat> you look in the mirror and you might not see what others see. You don't see the beauty in yourself you see the flaws right that's what we do we look at our flaws and that's wrong that's an absolute wrong way to do it you know I take a lot of selfies one of my nicknames at my last door was selfie because I had in the neighborhood of 1400 selfies on my phone um, I think it's over 1500 now but I don't take them because I'm arrogant I don't take it because for any other reason I'm just I have confidence and I look good today I may not always believe it but I I bring that as though I do believe it. Even if I don't, I, I come across as though I do. And that confidence will bleed over into other people. Um, there's a lot of reasons. Um, you know, there's insecurity. There's you know, all of these things, self-image, um, all these things that, you know, we got to try try build up within the person, right? Because if we can build that up and start building you kind of from the inside out and, 
you will see a noticeable change. You know, insecurity is a big thing. Um, I'm a perfectionist on the next level. I set goals that I can never achieve, nor anybody could ever humanly possibly achieve. But I set them that high because I'm always striving, always pushing. Of course, now when I don't make it, I get super depressed and I get very down on myself. Um, but that's a, another another episode there. But you know, when it comes to insecurities, because we're all insecure about things, you know, the first thing you got to do is embrace the fact that you're going to make mistakes. You're going to at work, you're going to screw stuff up, right? You're going to screw up relationships. You're going to whatever it is. Like these things happen, and we're we're insecure about our looks. We're insecure about our our height, or our weight, or our clothes, or the car we drive. Like the list could go on and on. And you need to stop. Quit comparing yourself to everybody else, right? And if you follow the last the last video where I talked about seeing yourself as God sees you, if you can carry that confidence over. That will help, you know. When you look, there's not a mistake I could make at work that could not be undone, right? For the most part, every mistake can be undone. There's a remedy somewhere. We'll come up with a fix for it. But you know, you take those those times of insecure, you know, making mistakes and just learn from them. So next time, when I first got promoted, I made a ton of mistakes, but I learned and I learned. And when I came to my new store, I didn't realize just how much I knew until I got in here when I didn't have 14 other managers to lean on, right? I just had me. Um, but you know, if you're insecure about how you look, you, you got to look beyond that mirror. And it's hard. Believe me, I know it's hard. But try to look <clears throat> at the inner person, right? And we can get into all that later, but I'm trying to break down video-wise kind of what has helped me be, get the Kendall effect going that, Look, we all know it's a true thing, right? Can't help it. Um, I just, yeah, it just happens. But these are parts of it, right? I, I beat my insecurity. Yes, I'm overweight. I don't give a crap. I'm not the prettiest girl in the room, but you know, when I walk in, yeah, probably I'm overweight. I'm old. <laughs> um, I, I don't have a deep. I have a deep voice. I, I, I have all these flaws, but when I leave that room. You're gonna think I'm the prettiest, most amazing chick in that room. And it's because of my confidence, it's because of my personality. They all merge and they bring in them. And I embrace my insecurities. You know, I make fun of the fact that I'm overweight, but you know, I'm working on it, right? Small steps, working on it, working on it. You know, I don't have two, three grand a month to spend on a new wardrobe. Don't have that, right? But I don't care about that stuff. So it's irrelevant to me. What matters to me is how do I feel today? How am I going to get to work and impact the most people possible during the course of the day? And I'm talking just a, a kind word or um, I guess we don't do hugs now. You know, that friendship hug, I guess we don't do that stuff anymore. But it's those words of edification. And, you know, I've had associates tell me, they're like, oh, I screwed this up and I screwed that. No, you didn't. And that's gonna, that is always my response. No, you didn't screw it up. You made a mistake and now we move on. Right? We, we figure out how to correct it and we move on. If we beat ourselves up over mistakes, you're never going to get out of that insecurity phase. Right? you got to start seeing yourself as an amazing, amazing person. And until you can do that, and we'll get you there. We'll get you there. That's part of where my mind goes on this. And, of course, I'm going to tie in the Christianity part of it because, again, that's who I am. Um, but... So over the course of the next few messages, I want to kind of touch on the things that have really made the Kendall Effect work, that will work um, for you. And i got to look over my notes because, yeah, I can't see. Um, i like, hey, what's up? Um, but, you know, the one thing is, is everybody is good at something, right? Everybody has a talent, a niche, something that they excel at better than someone else. Find out what it is, or if you know what it is, like start to capitalize on that. And increase that and expand that so that you you know I find I've talked to a few guys that are really good gamers and not very old but they're they're good game players and stuff like that and we've had conversations and it's amazing the um, comparisons they can draw from the games to situations in life like it's really cool how they can tie all that together um, so confidence is huge 
right? Stop seeing the flaws, and it's hard to do because I see the flaws myself all the time. But stop seeing the flaws in yourself. Start to build yourself up. Do those self-affirmation, the positive self-talk. Don't get down on yourself. If you make a mistake, you're like, own it, all right? I ordered too much of this, or I built this wrong. Let's let's do it right. Let's fix it and make it happen. There's nothing you can do that can't be undone for the most part. There are some things, I'm sure. Um, so anyway, I'm just I'm super excited because I want people to understand how the candle effect really works. And I'm no life coach, right? I'm nothing like that. I'm just trying to bring me to you and until I can get, especially until I can get back to seeing people every day. Um, my interactions are really pretty limited with anybody, really. I spend a lot of time watching Netflix, um, watching a ridiculous amount of documentaries because I like that kind of stuff. I'm kind of nerdy like that. Um, so I spend a lot of time just, um, you know, self-reflecting and watching Netflix and doing physical therapy, which is kicking my backside like hard, but I'm getting through it, or I'm getting through it because I'm getting stronger every day. Um, so anyway, confidence and insecurity, right? Insecurity, we all have it. Let's start getting past that. Find something that you're good at. Think of something that you're really good at. Start to build off of that. You make a mistake, own it and learn from it and let's move on. Don't um, quit focusing on the physical features of yourself, right? Whether you got you know, long hair, short hair, you skinny, fat, whatever you perceive as your issues, just stop it, right? Just stop it and embrace who you are and love who you are. Because if you start to love who you are, you're gonna build that confidence. You're gonna draw people into you. People are gonna be drawn to you. People are just drawn to me because of my confidence. And I think probably my hair too. My hair's pretty amazing. I'm not gonna lie about that. It is pretty amazing. That's probably a bigger part of it. But that confidence draws people in, and pretty soon you build this network of people, and your your self-esteem and your confidence and all of this stuff just starts to build up because you're like you're around like-minded people. Right? Stay away from those negative people that bring nothing positive in your life. And sometimes you got a 86 relationship, right? If it get you in a better place mentally right so anyway that's all i'm gonna have for today uh, i want to get this posted today because i'm trying to do uploads on tuesdays and saturdays any content comp um content um suggestions shoot me a message facebook text me uh whatever um because some days i kind of draw a blank and i'm not sure if i'm gonna go back to the podcast part or just keep it here not really sure yet um but we'll let i'll see how the lord leads me to do on that so anyway hope you guys have a great day Enjoy the mild temperatures, and it will soon again be in the 70s. Hallelujah. All right, Kendall Nation, hashtag 3177 Barbie. I'm out of here. Have a good day.